part of being customer sensitive, I think for any brand or marketer, uh, the very first way that we would have probably been, you know, have done that would be to set up a helpline which allows people to come and uh, talk to you, right? And uh, as part of that process, uh, you would have set up a helpline, then in time somebody would say, we want to talk to people better, we want to reach out to them, SMSs, etc., uh, social media, presence on a media that allows you to share content and talk to your customers, etc. All of that would have essentially happened. Uh, just to give you a quick stat here, at our helpline today, uh, we are not uh, a really involved brand in that sense, like the telecom or, or the car brands, etc. But even at the helpline today, we are doing close to about 40,000 interactions per month, right, as, as a pain brand. Uh, the moment we set in the helpline and we started receiving such large volumes, like any brand or marketer, uh, the next thing that you probably do is look to use technology in a very efficient manner, right? So using an aspect system that would essentially work at the back end, uh, then leveraging data and technology that allowed you to see customer views and to see that on dashboards and to correspondingly make decisions from them, using analytics to know where your customer is going to be next, powering that with a CRM. Uh, you know, so those are the standard things that any marketer does as an evolution of uh, interacting and engaging with customers. But here's the question uh, that I'm really asking all the brands and the marketers today, and, and, and I think even the solution to it is pretty simple. Uh, in all of this, where we kind of break down customers to numbers and to decisions based off dashboards, uh, how many of us, how many of our brand managers today are actively listening to conversations that are happening with customers on a daily basis? Or is that only restricted to the, you know, once a month or twice a month market visit that the brand manager does? Uh, as part of a customer sensitizing initiative done across the organization, uh, today uh, we were in task that today we have to ensure that every employee in the organization, whether he's working in the legal team, whether he's working in the plant, whether he's working in marketing or sales, must have a way of knowing what customers are literally saying on a daily basis, right? And when we're talking about literally saying on a daily basis, we are really talking about having a view on the conversations that customers are having with us. Therefore, this is what we did. Uh, it's a completely a homegrown initiative. Uh, it's not technically complicated, so I'm, I'm hoping it's easy for a lot of you all to understand and therefore to implement, uh, you know, in your own brands and companies. Uh, the voice of customer is a simple solution that gets, uh, picks up data from the back end of our aspect solution which supports our helpline. And uh, what we aim to do is that the sound bites which are tagged with a lot of metadata at the back end is populated, we populate close to about 1,500, 200, 2,000 sound bites per month. Uh, these sound bites are populated by a set, a team of people at the helpline who put it into the back end of a database. It's put there in the database. And correspondingly, uh, what we aim to do is that our employees get onto the database, listen to these sound bites, and therefore suggest ways uh, that the organization can do a better job of dealing with these customers uh, or suggest better ways of how the helpline can deal with these customers. Now this is based on a very fundamental insight that we have is that no employee when they come on the database, when they come on the portal, uh, they do not come there as employees of the organization. Uh, they come there from the perspective of an expert and I can promise you this that all of you guys sitting over here are equally experts in this domain. Uh, I think we got the first, you know, few rupees as pocket money as kids when we were probably eight or nine or ten years old. I mean, the age really doesn't matter, but that would be at least 20 to 25 years of being customer experts, right? So we know how we buy, we know why we buy, and we are asking the employees to pretty much use a similar lens when they come onto this portal. So what they really do is that they log in with their password onto the LAN, that's the portal that we have for the, for the employees. Uh, the metadata is also organized with the sound bites, so I can choose if I'm a brand manager for a certain brand, which is Asian Paints Royal, I can choose to see all the helpline conversations that customers have had 
on the brand royal with the helpline agents and I can instantly know what a customer is asking, why are they asking it, where are they facing difficulties, uh, what do they need to know more about the brand, etc. And this is happening in real time. The next thing that they do is they can then choose to be even more specific and they can ask saying, okay, I want to learn about all complaints that somebody's had with the brand royal or I want to know, you know, if somebody's given genuine uh, feedback on the brand, if somebody has a query on the brand. So the metadata really allows you to break down the data and to select and pick the sound bites that you really want to listen to. Now here's the interesting thing, we don't just want you to listen to what the customers are saying and then you carry on and go ahead and do, you know, your daily work. We want you to play the role of giving feedback like a regular customer would, right? So there are two text boxes over there. Uh, the first text box you need to fill in to, you know, tell the helpline agent and here is where it works as a quality check on the helpline, right? If you have a helpline of 200, 300 odd agents and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're relying on a quality manager from the helpline provider itself, that's only so much that they will necessarily tell you. But here we have close to about seven and a half thousand employees across the organization literally operating as quality managers for all customer interactions that we have. So the first box says that if I was a customer and you were doing this conversation with me, I would expect you to have done this, 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 right? So that's a quality check for the helpline agent. The second box is again where the employee plays the role as a customer and he says that if I was dealing with Asian Paints as a customer, I feel this policy of yours is not entirely in the interest of the customer. Can you do something over here? So we also see this portal as an idea generation platform where the ideas come from employees themselves, but here employees operating as customers. Uh, so we pull the data from the back end, use the metadata from the aspect system, put it into filters, allow people uh, to, you know, to, to access the sound bites over a 30 day period. And then in the next 30 days, there's a fresh set of sound bites that are put up over there. And then obviously the employees get onto the portal, listen to these sound bites and they, uh, they give ideas. However, we also found out that uh, a lot of employees were requesting for this content that was getting generated the helpline to be available to them when they were traveling. Uh, we have also launched the mobile version of it. That's the front page uh, version of the voice of customer. Most of our traffic today of people actually logging in and listening to uh, customers is actually happening in the morning travel hour and in the evening travel hour. You know, people coming to work and then that's the time when they're anyway on their mobiles, they choose to log in and listen to sound bites, give their feedback and log out, right? Uh, what it has actually translated into is that uh, from a simple request or a simple requirement of having employees listen to customers, uh, it's actually translated into an ideas platform, right? So today there are, the final number says it, in the last 17 months of putting this online, we've had about 57,000 voice packets listened to. Interestingly, uh, it's not the marketing or sales people who are really high up there. I think they're number three in the listing. The number one guys who are actually listening into what the customers are saying are from the plants, right? It really shows you where the ownership of manufacturing products actually lies. So these are the guys who, they are the ones making the products, the plant operators, whoever has a, 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 an employee ID or password, they log in, they can listen to it, they give feedback, there is always positive feedback in, being given. And we've had close to about 200 ideas being generated. Now, when you look at some of the ideas, they appear to be pretty intuitive, but then again, once these ideas are generated, each of these ideas are accompanied with a timeline that is committed by the respective team. So the first idea saying a drop call needs to be channelized back to the same agent uh, is an idea that the helpline team is working with and they have committed to delivering this in the next four months. So the moment you generate an idea that is picked up for implementation, a timeline is given, when it's implemented, the person giving the idea, the employee giving the idea is the first person who gets to know that it has been implemented henceforth. That person is also therefore given an R&R. There is rewards and recognition that is given to the individual person. So from a portal of listening to customers, we have actually moved it completely into a portal of where your ideas are accepted, recognized, and they are given the due rewards and recognition. Uh, like I said, uh, some of the other ideas including, uh, we got a lot of feedback saying that for dealers or prospective dealers who are wanting to open up uh, new retail counters for us, 
They were just finding the entire registration process a little too difficult at the helpline. So that's got simplified. We now do it in less than two minutes. We register a person in case he wants to open up a new counter. So a lot of ideas have been generated. Correspondingly, ideas have been responded to. And we are finding this to be one of the most interesting homegrown employee initiatives within the organization, uh, reliant a lot on technology, no doubt, right? But it's a technology that's easy to implement. Uh, you could talk to your helpline teams. You could talk to the IT guys who actually uh, you know, work along with your helpline teams. And, and I genuinely believe this is an idea that's easily done in any organization, uh, you know, as long as you want to be customer sensitive uh, and customer centric, right? So, so that's one of the uh, innovations that we've done in the organization, we are pretty proud of. And it's an idea that I'm throwing open to everybody else over here. Uh, I would be really happy if, if, if you know, many of us within India can really take this up and do this. Because every customer says something. I think that's the purpose with which we created this idea. Uh, and of course, we have the employees now who respond to the idea, to the, to the calls, and, and, and they come up with genuine ideas. Thank you very much. Yeah.